peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to invite the church to stand up so we can read the Bible in the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament, chapter 38. Jeremiah 38, we're going to read verse 6. Jeremiah 38, verse 6. There it is. So they took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the king's son, which was in the court of the prison. And they let Jeremiah down with ropes, and in the dungeon there was no water, but mire. So Jeremiah sank in the mire. Amen. The brethren can sit down. <clears throat> the Bible says that God is great in advice and magnific in power. And that every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord never goes back. It does what pleases God. That's why we always sing this song called All the Promises. Every word that the Lord has said will be fulfilled. And one of the prophecies that we are uh, soon to participate in is of the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the text that you have just read speaks of a moment in which Israel was living. The city, the kingdom of Israel, Jerusalem, was going to be taken over by the Chaldeans. And whoever was left there was going to be destroyed and the city was going to be devastated. And God sent a prophet. But, uh, to help all the Jerusalems. And the Bible talks about that the king of Israel at that time, he did not listen of the voice of the prophet Jeremiah. That was the voice of the Lord. And he looked for, for other ways and force and power. <laughs> to go through this with the army of the he thought that with the army of the Egyptians they would be able to win that battle that was coming and the prophet Jeremiah he says look there is no reason to go after the Egyptians because they will not save us. They will not take us from away from what is coming. And Jeremiah, he had written a few letters that were revelations from the Lord and the people of that time. They got what he wrote and they and they ripped all of it and burned it in the fire because they did not want to listen what the Lord had already determined and revealed for each one of them. The word also talks about Jeremiah in which he left Jerusalem and he went to a place and 
He reached the door, and the door talks about the son of Benjamin, Benjamin, Jacob's son, that when he was born, his name was going to be Benon, son of my, which means son of my affliction. But his father changed changed it to Benjamin, which is son and so Jeremiah was at this door Benjamin's door and the brother knows what that means son of Jesus because Jesus is the door this, he was at the door the son of Jesus he who enters this door will enter, will pass through, and will find salvation. But if you do not go through it, if you don't believe, and so there was already, was already condemned, but there was also an escape. There was also a way to get away from it. There was the option of salvation. But the Bible says that they took Jeremiah and cast him in a dungeon. The Bible also says that the prince, the princes, hurt Jeremiah. And they put him in a prison of a person named Jonathan. What's interesting is that it was it was a house, a house that was transformed into a prison. The house of a son of Israel, of a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The house of a son of God. It cannot be transformed into a prison. What the Bible says is that when we receive the Lord, we are saved. And so in that home, there was no more liberty for God to act, for God to prophetize, for God to operate. The Bible says, I am at the door and I knock. If you open, I will answer. And with them, I will suffer, and him with me. And so the Holy Spirit enters a home. And he comes. And I will make in it my home. So what does this all mean? That's how it means the, means the time of the Holy Spirit. So now, transforming a home into a prison. And, and not letting the the Lord work in the home then you know that everything is completely distant and away from the project of God it's because if God doesn't have the liberty to do his work then how will he and the house there of Jonathan transformed into a prison we cannot transform our home, our life, in a prison of prophecy for the Lord. Our home has to continue being a home. We need to have the opportunity and the liberty of the Holy Spirit to act in our life. And the word says that it came to an even harder moment. The home had been transformed into a prison. Jeremiah was hurt. And so we see now that they took Jeremiah and they cast him into the dungeon of Amalki, the king's son. 
and so we see the decrease of the spiritual life of a people first they went away from the prophecies they burned the word of the Lord they heard it they put him in a prison and then now they put him in an even what we can say a worse place a bit more difficult place they took then Jeremiah to the dungeon of Malachi the king's son there's a text in the Bible that It says that God has great things for his his people. There was a kingdom. And in the kingdom there was the son of the king. And now the, the son of the king had the dungeon there prepared. Sometimes we can say, I am the son of the king. Amen. That is true. We are the sons of a king. Uh, the king, the king of kings, the lord of lords. And as the son of a king, as the son of the lord of lords, we do not have authority to put down the prophecy of the Lord. We are sons of the king, we are sons of the kingdom, but we need to obey. Obey our king, obey our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is very easy. No, I accepted Jesus in my life. It's it's easy. When you say raise your hand, whoever wants to whoever wants to accept Jesus, everybody everybody raise their hand. But now you say is the is the Lord the Lord of your life? But letting Jesus be the Lord of our life is what is difficult. Accepting Jesus is easy. But letting Jesus be the Lord of our life, that's a different story. So people say, oh, I'm the son of the king, so I can do whatever I want. I have authority. I have the authority to accept this or that prophecy. I can accept either one. I can choose. God will speak to me. And, okay, I don't like this one, but I like this one. This one, I'll... I'll keep in my heart, and this one, I'll just, you know, throw it away. This prophet that said something against me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be him. But that prophet that only said good things, I'm gonna hug him. Like that, it's very easy. And then the whole world is gonna serve God this way. The first... The first commandment, love the Lord your God above all things. The prayer, your will be done. The will of God at that time right there, no one wanted it to be fulfilled. No one. The princes did not want to. The son of the king didn't want, and the king also did not want it. Sometimes we want to be our own king. We want that our will to be over God's. The name of this is idolatry. I made for me for myself an idol and the Bible says that the idolaters 
will not be in the kingdom of heaven. It will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And so it talks about Malachi, the son of the king. The son is the one that was was born. Sometimes we're the king and we have a son. We have a we have a project for our son maybe and this dream what we want. It is completely outside of the plan of God's plan. And the Bible says that the son of of the king was was in was awaiting in his house and it also talks about the servants of the Lord that were there awaiting and then there was also the ones that it doesn't talk about the ones that were not in service of God and were not in this planet. It talks about the ones that were in this planet and were there serving. And sometimes we are in the bad situation. The Bible talk, talked about that. That they put, they put Jeremiah down with ropes the Jews sometimes uh, the Jews they get their Bible the Old Testament and they put it in the highest place of their home and that has a significance <coughs> saying that the highest of the ha house here is God because the word is over everything in the home because the word is the most important but now here it talks about how they put the prophecy in the lowest place all the way down down in the dungeon and so the word says that and that dungeon in which Jeremiah was put down, you can see that the whole, the Holy Spirit. There is no water. There was no water. There is a significance. There was no water in that place. There's a prophet that said, My soul is thirsty for you, the God that is alive. You can see that it was a dry time. When you are thirsty, you are in anguish. Because there is a necessity that you need. And then comes the anguish. So there was no water. There was nothing to refresh. There was no peace. But there was something else there. What was in that place? There was mire. Mire is dirt. Is dirt. And then it becomes mire. Mire. 
admire is the the work that is for this life. It is wanting both things. Serving two lords. So the prophecy, it was in the mire. The Apostle Paul, he says some very interesting things that says, this commandment I give you, my son, my son Timothy, here, listen to the prophecies. And through them, you will have good things. Later, Paul comes again. In chapter 4, verse 14. Do not let what is within you, and which was given you by a prophecy. Brethren, there are two things that the Lord is is telling us we cannot go away from a prophecy we cannot take the prophecy and the prophecy from God the project from God for our life F close it finish it in the prison, I can't get the project that God has for my life and put it in a dungeon. I can't get the project that God has for my life and throw it in the in the mire. In Brazil. There was a, a brother, and he said, starting today, I'm not going to be serving the Lord anymore. And starting today, I don't want to be a worker anymore. I don't want to be a deacon anymore. I don't want to be, I don't want to play an instrument. I don't want to be part of the group of praise. I don't want to be a pastor. When I got to church, I wanted to stay all the way in the last, the la in the last row. I was very complicated. I still am. I work a lot to save myself, and I keep thinking about this until today. Yeah, there is nothing for me. I'm so complicated that if God let me be in the last row, close to the door, and even push me out, I'd be very happy. But with time, the Lord began to call me. Fixing me very slowly, taking away all the little cracks, all the things that were wrong. And then one day, My brother came up to me, a pastor, and said, look, he 
and he said, look, I think you're going to do more things now. And then I thought, I don't, I don't think this is for me. And then I opened, I opened what he had for me and I said, the blessings of David, I will give to you. And I said, wow, now, now there's no way to reject. There's no way to put it in the dungeon, throw it in the mire. Now, now I have to go with this word. And so, sometimes a brother wants to stop in the walk. And sometimes they say, oh, I was a worker. I was a deacon. But it is, and it is it's something, it's, it's something so bad to hear. When someone says, oh, I was a, was a teacher all in the past. It, it's so bad to hear. The prophecy of the Lord, it is only for a little bit, just a period. When God's, when God made the promise to Abraham almost more than 4,000 years ago, don't you think it goes for this time too? The calling of the Lord for your life it's over and doesn't exist anymore the glory of Israel went away the prophecy that the Lord show of of your home with your wife and your kids well, what did you do with that I put it away or I put it in the dungeon, in the mire. The word says here that Jeremiah, he was put in the dungeon. There was no water, there was just mire. But Jeremiah was took away from there so that the project of the Lord would be fulfilled in his life. I don't know where Jeremiah is for my life. If I left them in the door of Benjamin. If I, if I go away from it, if I lock them in the prison in Jonathan's house, or if he is in the house of the son of the king in the dungeon. But there is one thing. That is certain. We need to take Jeremiah out of there and put Jeremiah in the place that God revealed for him. Because we cannot take away the project of the Lord away f from what he has given us because this is very important and God spoke brethren if God called you to reveal his word then reveal his word because this is what the Lord wants for our lives God he is our supreme he is our Lord he is our guide. He is our pastor. He is our helper. Us trying to change what the Lord has for us. The people wanted to ask for help from another people. Help from the 
Asked for help from Egypt. Egypt, which was the country that was like the world. So there was no place in the world or for the world in the project of God. There's no room. We have to separate these things. Elevate my eyes for the mount to the mountains. So will I I'll see the help because my help comes from the Lord. And then in another psalm it says the Lord it says the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And that is what the Lord has for us. It is a word of the Lord that cannot be put in the dungeon. Every time that there's difficulties, or there's afflictions, when there's persecution, there's you're not going to find help from Egypt because Egypt will not help you. The world will not help you. Our praise, our praise should always be to the Lord. Last night, the brother talked about the prophet Elijah. Elijah. Who went there to serve Elijah. An angel of the Lord. Why? Because even with all the tribulation that he was living in, God is still the Lord of his life. And we say there in Matthew 4, it talks about Jesus' affliction. And then who got there? Who got there to serve Jesus? It said. And so the angels got there and served him. And so this prophecy, this project from the Lord, it is for the period of all our existence. And so we cannot go away from the God's plan. Because sometimes when the brethren receives a spiritual gift, they want to keep it from Because you don't see many gifts in the word that it is it is a compliment. The brother remembered very well here. The prophet went before the king and said, Put your house in order. He went to the king. But he didn't go and take the prophecy and put it in the dungeon. When the prophet went to the king and said, The, the, the king of Israel, he said, he put his face to the wall and cried. He didn't go away from the project of the Lord. And so what happened to him? The Lord made 15 more, gave him 15 more years of life. He got his, he got the gr his group of praise and the people who played instruments and he went to the battle and he already went glorifying because he knew that the Lord had the victory for his life. The word says that we are more than victorious. And why are we more than victorious? Because it says, because there, the victory is in the love of God and his grace and his mercy for our lives. And the Bible says that His mercy, there is no, there's not diff there's different functions every day. So this is a prophecy for us, for any of us. 
And so you're going to get this prophecy and you're going to burn it and rip it? You're going to throw it in the dungeon, in the mire? There's not going to be a blessing for my life. The blessing is in listening and putting it away and being obedient. I put away your word in my heart, the prophecy in which your heart is where all the prophecies should be. There's a woman that that saw a man passing through the same place every day and she went to she went to her husband and said, Look, that man that is passing by, he is a holy man of God. So he took her he took him to her house and they gave him bread. But she said bread is not enough. So she made a room. She gave him she put a bed, a table, a chair. And she put the prophet. The Bible said that she put him in a very protected place because she did not she didn't go away from the prophet. She wanted the prophet and the prophecy to be with her in her home. And another thing being well received and being well received because if you call the person to your home and you don't even assist them it's better to not even take them right because that's complicated but she brought the prophet gave him all the necessary things and the bible s speaks about all the things and so when she was with the prophecy she went and she was able to have a son later when there was difficulty there was a woman that went to the king and she had lost everything and when she got to the king and he said look this is the woman and this is the son the king was there King got there and he told the woman, reinstate everything. And so she left the prophecy. She went with the prophecy and nothing went away from her. Amen. The children of a song.
Hallelujah. The hope of the Lord of the church is Maranatha. The Lord Jesus will come. The pa as the pastor was giving the message, I remember that my kidney had I had to have a surgery and I died. And in this period, it was in 2005. And the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I came, I came to get you. I came to get you, but because of your family, I'm going to leave you and give you more years of life. I don't know how many. And then the next day I res resurrected. So if you are faithful, he will answer. If you serve him, then he will be with you. If you leave the prophecy, then you won't you won't go up. The Lord wants to save you. Thank you, Lord, for this moment that we are in your presence. We thank you because you give us comfort. We thank you for everything you have put upon us. We thank you for all the battles you have permitted to prove our faith. We know that we one day we'll be in your presence in Jesus' name. And we say that in Jesus' name, that the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our God and Father, the blessings of the Holy Spirit be upon us now and forever. Amen. The brother may be seated. Is there anything anything that there needs to be said? Service, 7.30 tonight. Let's not forget. And the blessing of the Lord. Let's pray for the children. The, one of the deacons. Lord, thank you for your children that they may grow in your presence, that they never go away from it, that they may learn your word, your word that you have prepared. In Jesus' name, amen.